one of my earliest mediations, one of the mediations I would use to give an example of how successful it can be, uh, related to a couple who sadly had two very disabled children. Uh, the guy uh, was really the house husband, and so he uh, looked after their every need. And you're talking about lots of needs. It was a full-on job, really, for him. She was an optician, career, business, obligations to staff, employed staff, ran a business. But obviously, just loved those two children just as much as her husband did. But her husband, unfortunately, wanted out of the relationship. He had uh, other ambitions about his life and wanted to do it in a way that could help him get over that potential horrible guilt of, well, how does he do this and still do what he has to do for his disabled children. And we had three, four sessions of mediation. It was difficult for his wife, who really couldn't understand why he had to seek work, uh, life opportunities elsewhere. Uh, he had the guilt of, well, can I somehow leave my children? How, how can their needs be met if we're not together? And the solution, actually, was an incredible amount of cooperation in how those daily needs, 24-7, were met by them both. It did mean, maybe, that the mother was going out the door, the father was going in the door. It meant, perhaps unconventionally, that uh, the family home for those children became the family home for the children. It's almost as if the parents actually lived somewhere else when they weren't caring for the children. But those children didn't know any different as a result of the solution in mediation to how their parents had been caring for them before. The arrangement was different, but it was an arrangement that could be worked through so that both the parents' needs were met, but more importantly, they delivered the needs for the children. And it would have been a very difficult and very painful experience if that was the traditional full-on sort of dispute over who's caring for the children and who's not. Under the Children Act 1989, the carer would be called the the, the person who had the residence order, because that's where the child resided. The presumption was the person who occupied that home was the holder of the residence order, and the one who was absent, the absent parent, would have contact with the children. Well, now it's a child arrangement plan, and that is trying to effectively, by the courts in family law, sort of delabel a practical arrangement for how you look after your children and that there isn't any higher or middle or lower ground in who's taking the job of caring for the children. Both parents are in this. It's their children. They're in it for their children's lifetime. But that just shows you the emphasis in the family legal world of trying to put the issues back to the parents. You are the parent of your child. You take responsibility. You have parental responsibility. Organise it, even if you're not together. Mediation doesn't work in a vacuum. It, it works in a way that possibly creates a platform for the legal boys to make orders. But also, it works with the individuals and their relationship. When the contact is made with a potential mediating client, there are worries about whether or not their own voice will not be heard. That worry can be addressed, for instance, by them just coming to me, for instance, me as a mediator to start with, showing where they will be sitting, showing how the room may suit or not suit them. Uh, and certainly sometimes uh, it can be arranged so that the individuals are in different rooms. It's not necessarily the most effective method of mediation, but it is a, a method that is reacting to the client's wishes and their need potentially for clarity about how they can speak and have their voice heard. I, I had an example recently where uh, 
uh, a couple saw me and uh, she was a teacher and he was a lorry driver and I felt that he, this is our first meeting so I was just getting to know them, they were getting to know me, but he was rather reticent in speaking up and I asked him whether he felt he had any concerns about that, whether or not uh, he needed to talk to me about why it was that he seemed a bit, a bit slow in, in wanting to speak up about his situation. He said at the time in, in the mediation with, with his wife there that he didn't have an issue. The next morning I had a call about half past nine and he was saying, John, look, I always get concerned talking about serious things with my wife and she's cleverer than me, she's a teacher, she always ran all the money, uh, I don't know how I can really speak up and speak my mind with her present there. And we had a long talk about just how his voice might be heard. And we had uh, another session which was arranged around his own work schedules. Uh, it was at a weekend and he had thought long and hard about the fact that this is an opportunity for him. And that changed his approach. He, this was an opportunity he didn't want to lose, didn't want to miss out on. And so he could speak up. So, and he did speak up, and in fact, um, it, was, it became quite a, a difficult emotional meeting uh, because of the differences in, in their whole approach. And it was perhaps uh, noticeable that maybe his wife hadn't really realised uh, the inner self of my lawyer driver about his feelings about where he stood in their relationship. Um, and that will carry on. Uh, that's not resolved yet, so that's another place to go. But there can be assistance. There can be support from a counsellor, or sometimes they call themselves a divorce coach. Uh, they are uh, individuals who will help to be that voice, which isn't a legal voice, it's not the mediator, but somebody who can perhaps help an individual install in themselves the right sort of confidence to address the issues that really count. Because of the relationship, obviously, there's all sorts of things happening in a relationship. And all of also when the relationship breaks down. And so, sometimes it's helpful to have somebody there. It can be a brother or sister, a mother or aunt. But it can be a specialist who uh, understands effectively the trauma, if you like, of facing what happens when the relationship's gone wrong. Uh, and uh, sometimes I say, it's a very good thing to try to look at it, not with all those negativities, because something's gone wrong, but try to think of it, okay, okay, let's try to separate with style. And, and if you can separate with style, and you can take assistance and help to get to that position, where you separate, separate, separate out your affairs with style, then you can look back and say, well, yes, that was a good relationship. It didn't work out, but here I am, and we, we're going places, different places but we're still going places.